Are you tired of struggling with the knotted mess of your headphone cords? Sick of those boring black and white cords? You are not alone! Here's how you can make your headphone cords tangle-proof and awesome-looking. We're going to need some embroidery floss. Pick out your favorite color combo, or you could do a solid color. You could even do black or white if you just don't want anything flashy. I always have a hard time picking just one color, so I went rainbow. You can do color changes randomly, or you can eyeball it, or you can get kind of anal about it and measure it all out. I'm going to measure mine. Every two inches, I want to change colors, so I'm going to mark every two inches with a piece of masking tape. Once you get it all marked, we shall commence with the knotting. Cut yourself a length of the embroidery thread. We'll start with a simple double knot, and you really want to make sure you've got it snugged up to the edge of the cord. Now we'll take the short end of the tail and hold it against the cord, so that when we start wrapping, we'll also be wrapping the thread tail. If you're familiar at all with making friendship bracelets, you probably know this knot. It's called a spiral knot, and it's really just a plain old single knot that happens to form a spiral as it winds down the cord. So that's what we do. Knot, 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 all the way down. Once you hit your first mark, it's time to stop and grab your next thread color. Tie the new thread, slide it up, and then loop the new thread around both the cord and the old thread and the new thread tail. If you wind up with a little gap between the two colors, you can pull on the thread tails and snug everything up. Not, not, not again, until you get maybe half an inch or so, and then you can trim the thread tails. I find them to be kind of a pain if I don't trim them. All right, back to work. Not, 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 until you get to the next color change. And you repeat this forever and ever, or at least it seems like it, until you get to the other end of the cord. For this spot where the right and left sides meet, I'm just going to hop over to the other cord and not all the way back up to the top. I wasn't really thinking when I did the masking tape thing when I started, but I should have marked two inches starting from this end, because it's kind of in my way now. So instead I'm just going to end up removing the tape on this side and eyeballing it to match the other side. Okay, we've reached the end of the line. What to do with this last thread tail? I've tried to keep most of my knots pretty tight throughout this process. But for the last maybe five to ten knots, I've left them a little bit looser. Not too loose, just a wee bit. I'm going to use a big jumbo upholstery needle or a yarn needle. It's the same one I use to tuck my serger tails. And I'm going to thread it up through the last few stitches. And then pull the last thread tail through. Now I pull tight, and then you trim, and boom. That's pretty much it. Start again from the last cord end, same way we did before, knotting and knotting and switching colors and trimming tails and tucking the very last tail the same way we did here, and then you're done. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and for more tips, tricks, and kick-ass sewing patterns, visit whatthecraft.com.